Okay, this is definitely new. I never got this far with Anna's storyline, so here we go. I find her personality quite difficult to work with. She's quite um, confrontational and dismissive and rude. And yeah, and she but she doesn't like people taking the piss out of her at the same time. So yeah, let's see how this works. I guess she's here. Hey Anna. Hey, what's going on? You sounded pretty worried on the phone. Worried? If I was worried, it would mean I was afraid of something that might happen. But I'm way beyond that. I know exactly what's going to happen to me. It's over. It's all over. What are you talking about? First they came to my lab, and now they went to my home, too. Who did? The police. They raided the place. They had a warrant and everything. I already know that they have all they need to convict me. I'm going to die in prison. Why? It's because of those tests I did on you. You'll die in prison because you looked at my finger now under a microscope? I'm a bit confused. Start at the beginning. Okay. This goes back years, and you already know half the story. I was a brilliant mind who had skipped years in school and was on the fast track through university with an incredibly lucrative career in front of me. You wouldn't believe the offers I've had based on all my accomplishments. I was still in school and already solving problems that no one had even touched before. I had so many awards lining my shelves that the new ones just went straight to the trash. I didn't need them, I just enjoyed the challenge. Besides, I couldn't care less about what some old people thought of my work, as if I needed their approval. I was already more than any of them could ever dream to be. The next problem I was going to tackle was an incurable disease. I started my research, but in an ironic twist of fate, I ended up contracting the very same disease myself. Whether someone had been following health and safety protocols as well as they should have been, or if I was just unlucky, I'll never know. But the reality was, I now had a disease that was treatable, but not curable. Despite having helped an incredible amount of people with my work, I was now the one who needed that help. Yet there's no one out there who can help me. No one but myself. I was already planning on working on a cure anyway, but what better reason could there be than doing it to save myself? I told no one about my affliction and set out to do what many others had failed to. Any materials I needed to start my work were easily acquired just by waving my status around. I had free reign over my own lab. I could have got assistance if I wanted to, but I knew they would only be liabilities. I even had a few good leads for ways to combat the disease, although the one that I chose to pursue was not exactly legal. Not without prior approval by the council. My research was promising though, and while I submitted the paperwork, I knew that these things moved very slowly. Being pushed through the various boards and committees could have taken months, if not years, depending on how generous they would be. I just couldn't afford to wait that long, as I was working against the clock. So while waiting for the paperwork to be approved, I've already started with the work. I fully expected them to approve it eventually, how could they not, given that I was tackling an incurable disease? The method I was going to use was not necessarily a new one, but it was controversial. It didn't even cross my mind that anyone would object, seeing as I could cure thousands, if not millions of future people. But I was younger then, and a little more naive than I am now. In the end, my whole project came crashing down in flames. The proposal that I was sure would be approved was ultimately rejected, putting all the work I had already done into jeopardy. I had already made good progress at the time too. After the rejection, there was going to be an inspection of my workplace in order to determine the progress I had made on the project, which they assumed had been within legal bounds and didn't include the controversial things outlined in the paperwork. Of course, that meeting was just going to be a pretense, because I know there were already rumours going around about what really went on in my lab. In the end, I had very little warning. Thankfully, I managed to dispose of the most egregious evidence before they arrived. They found proof of my wrongdoing, but since they didn't find evidence of how far I'd already proceeded, I was able to deny most of their accusations. Using the controversial method when it hadn't been approved was still seen as very grievous offence, however. I was charged and sentenced harshly, though the sentence was suspended due to their lack of evidence. With all I had done for them, they knew better than to take away my licence, and I was able to continue work in other areas under the condition that it was within a council-owned facility. Okay, so I assume that those tests were on me, or against whatever conditions they set for the suspended sentence. Exactly. Okay, why didn't you do things the proper way and wait for the paperwork to clear? Before my paperwork would even get through, you'd be long gone. Using you as the test subject would have been a process that the council would have had to discuss with humanity. As such, there might have been another trade agreement and who knows what else. I just didn't have the time 
quite frankly, I don't even know how much longer I have left. This is my death sentence. You thought my test results would help you find a cure? And that's never going to happen now. How did they find out so quickly? It's not been that long since I came to your lab. It wasn't just those tests. There was Reza too. But Reza told me he didn't give you any of his blood when you asked for it. But because that's not what I got from him. This is my life we're talking about. Do you think I didn't spend hours on the ground in the hallway of the facility after Reza's first visit, trying to find a stray hair or anything else I could use? Or that when I gave him the first generator, I didn't try to graze his skin just enough so that I could salvage a few skin cells? How did they find out about all this? It was Damien, that piece of shit. He was blackmailing me. Wow, what a bastard. He's jealous of me and jealous of my success. There's a motivation for you. He found out what I was doing with the stuff I could salvage from Reza. I didn't mind giving him what he wanted though, I just wanted to live. When he died and the police searched his apartment, they found all the evidence he had on me. And now, everything's coming down. I'll be punished to the full extent of the law and I will die in prison. My work will forever be tainted. Not that I'll care about that when I'm dead. Do you remember that childhood friend of mine I told you about? I never wanted to end up like her. But it seems not even I can do anything to escape that fate. Maybe I deserve it. Maybe it's my punishment. I have to die like she did, because I left her. I'll spend my last days bedridden in a prison cell, and no one will visit me or care. And you know what? With all the data I got from you, I might have actually found a cure. I don't want to cry in front of you. I don't want the attention or the pity. I don't want it. I didn't cry back when I was diagnosed. And I'm sure as heck not going to cry now. Uh, okay. Don't say anything or I have read the letter. I know about your cancer. You have cancer. Oh man. How do you know that? Remy told me. What? <laughs> he must have used his position to look into some confidential documents. That's not exactly legal either. What a hypocrite. Why don't they just throw him into prison as well and let us rot together, huh? All those filthy bureaucrats, you should have heard them. How they don't want to change the rules because our tradition is sacred and that's how we've survived all those years. Tradition now demands that I die. But you know what? I'm not playing by their rules. Never have. Actually, why don't I line up all of those who got me here and kill them? Because if I'm going to die, why should I take them with me? I mean, I've got nothing to lose if I'm going to die anyway. Don't do that. Just give me one good reason. <laughs> because where I come from, we can cure cancer. You can? Are you saying that if I went back with you, if you smuggled me out, you could cure me? We have the facilities. If we had the power from the generators we asked for, we could. Are you kidding me? Because if you are, nah, it's the truth. Maybe we could work something out. I'm sure humanity would not object. Or maybe we could just give you the technology or the necessary method. We have already cured cancer. There's no need for you to die. And why would you do that for me? You know I didn't care about you. I just wanted your blood, your data, anything that would help me save myself. And that's exactly what I'm going to give you. Why? No one's ever cared about me. People are always willing to use my research, but I was just a machine to churn out results for them. That's what all the awards were for. I admit that I was selfish, always, yet I did great things. At least that's what everyone kept telling me. You know, after that whole affair back then, and the suspended sentence, the rumours about me never stopped. Did they warn you about me? Tell you to stay away? I'm sure they have. Why are you still here? I didn't listen to them, I guess. Just like you. The council, Damien, Remy, they were always sabotaging me. If everyone just left me alone, I wouldn't even need your help. Why couldn't everyone just leave me alone? When they gave me the manager position at the facility, it was just to distract me even more, giving me free reign over the lab so I'd be tempted to do something I shouldn't. How could I not at least try it? One of their oh so important founding principles is how every individual is important. That's clearly not the case with me, at least they never showed it was. Now I can see just how different you are. You're the only one who came to me willingly and without any ulterior motives. Or did you? You invited me, I took the invitation. Just to use you. <laughs> and you still came back for more. You let me do all those tests on you. 
Sure, you can play like a pro, but you sat it out for me. I owed it to you. You don't owe me anything anymore. So? Maybe I won't have to die after all. If you can cure me, I'll give you whatever you want. I know there's politics involved, and I know it may not ever happen, but this is my last straw, my last hope. I'll do what I can. Thank you. Anyway, enough of that. I hope you don't mind me hanging around here. My place still looks like the police raided it. Oh wait, that's exactly what happened. Uh, do you need help clearing up? No, I can pay someone to do it later. I just don't want to be there right now. Nice apartment you got here, by the way. Not as fancy as mine, but it isn't bad either. I guess the council treats you nicely. Yeah, it wasn't my decision. You're such a VIP, aren't you? I can't be that important if your apartment is nicer than this. <laughs> Besides, after your rhetoric about being wild and all that when we went on our date, I assumed you were more the type of person who just lives in a hole in the ground. That's not what I said. I told you, I can appreciate all kinds of different experiences. I could survive in the wild if I wanted to, though. Do you want to know what I did on my last vacation? I started walking in a random direction. I spent a week in the wilderness before I came back. That must have been an adventure. I wouldn't be able to do that without tools. I could give you some tips if you like. I'm not sure if I'll ever need them, but I guess they could come in handy. Actually, there's one tip that should take care of everything. Okay, tell me. Just be a dragon. Then you've got everything you need and you don't have to rely on tools and other stupid stuff. Wow. Yeah, that's super helpful. How do you think I'm supposed to do that? It's not my problem. <laughs> Actually, can you tell me about your advances in genetic engineering? Maybe you could make it happen. My personal ones? I'll speak in more of your society as a whole, but if you have a personal experience, that could also be interesting. We could do so much more if we wanted to. Cloning, genetic scrambling of hybrids of various different species. Heck, we could even create a new species if we wanted to, but that's not going to happen anytime soon. Tampering with genetics is not allowed. Okay, why? Our enlightened society does not see any value in it. Besides, you know about our creation myth, right? Uh, the one about a human creating you? Yeah, that one. It's the only one we have. Anyway, we're not to tamper with the perfect images after which we were created. Okay, and what would those be? The belief is that each species is moulded for particular tasks or a particular role in our society. Really? Some of them aren't even wrong. It suggests certain species are going to certain jobs because of their naturally high aptitude in those fields. Give me an example. Well, let's just say that while everyone can join the police force, you will never be the flyer on duty unless you belong to a species that can fly. Okay, that much is a given. I was talking about if there's any sort of discrimination, for example. You could say so. These structures can be pretty rigid in places, especially where the council is concerned. They really like to employ the members of the various species in their traditional roles. Ironically enough, the perpetual nuisance you know as Remy was a revolutionary case where that didn't happen. Okay, in what way? Well, a council's aide, particularly one who works in the archives, is usually a member of the species with more dexterous hands. You can't really expect a four-legged species to do that kind of job well. And he doesn't. It's really been a disaster. He's basically become the laughing stock of the whole town. When Remy initially got the position, there was lots of controversy about the subject. Some liked it, some didn't. I thought that for Emera, politics was a popularity contest. Doing something controversial and divisive like that doesn't really fit that image. She wasn't like that in the beginning. It certainly caused people to remember her though. And now that people know her, she's changed her attitude a bit. It was a good move, because it kept her in the spotlight all the time, and she's using it to gain popularity now. So she just likes the attention, is what you're saying. I don't know why she does it, and frankly, I don't care. You have to ask her for yourself, but I doubt she'd tell you. I wouldn't expect honesty from someone like her. Politics always used to be so messy back home. Scandals, arguments, liars. They're everywhere. We do get the occasional scandal from time to time, and of course there's always rumours. You can't really make people stop talking. In a way, I'm glad we don't have all that anymore. Why not? At some point, it just gets tiring. People get loud and argumentative, and those are supposed to be our leaders. That's not something people would like here. If you're a council member who wants to be popular, you don't engage in that kind of behaviour. Sounds like a nice change of pace. Not necessarily, since it also leads to reluctant agreements and sweeping issues that should be talked about under the rug. You know what? That doesn't jive with me. They like to preserve this fantasy of peace and harmony in our society. For me, it's just so fake. People pretend to be something they aren't to conform because they don't want to stand out. They become faceless puppets like drones in a hive or cogs in a machine. What kind of world do we live in where speaking one's mind is seen as something bad? 
I never held back and see where it's got me. I bet some would argue that it would be easier to conform then. <laughs> I could never do that. Besides, I don't want to. There's a thing called integrity, and if there's one thing the society needs, that's it. Okay, now you're starting to sound like a politician. If that's what your politicians sound like, maybe they aren't so bad. Sometimes I just want to walk up to some of theirs and shake them until they wake up and accept the truth. Okay, so what is the truth? I'm a scientist. Truth are facts that are empirically verifiable by science and tests. After all, the tests I do in my job are to find out if assumptions are true or not. I suppose if you ask different people, their definitions of the truth would be very different. What's truth to you then? Uh, truth is what I feel is right. I'll show you a few. I know that I know nothing. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? I don't know. It's a philosophical phrase. It means that, ultimately, we can't really know anything without absolute certainty. Yeah, philosophy is nice and all, but it doesn't really help me when I'm in the lab. You do seem to like talking about this kind of stuff, though. I'm not an ambassador for nothing, you know. You're an ambassador so you can discuss the nature of truth with different cultures? You know, if you ask the wrong kind of person, these kinds of discussions could turn very ugly. I'm certainly here to learn about what you're thinking and how your society works on the deeper level. Of course, I wouldn't just walk up to someone on the street and start talking. Maybe you should be talking with someone in social studies, then. Not necessarily. Even if someone like that gave me their opinion, it's still important to hear the people's voices themselves. Okay, anything else you want to know? How much do you really like me? That's not the kind of question I was expecting. You called me when things went down, and you say you don't really know anyone else. So? Is it that hard to admit that you like someone? You know me a little by now, you know what I'm like. Whatever you're looking for, you know that I'm not that kind of material. Not even as a friend. You want to use emotionally laden words to describe our relationship? We've met a few times, and that does it for you. It's not about me. Before anything happens to either of us, I just want to know. You want me to tell you how I feel about you? Even if something happens between us, you know it's not made to last. You'll go back to your own world, and I'll probably spend the next few years in prison. You wouldn't like the commitment anyway, would you? <laughs> True, I wouldn't let something like that hold me back. People don't like me, and I don't like people. That's how it's always been. Right now, though, I'd say that you're probably the person I hate the least. Something, I guess. <laughs> and I also can't deny that you have a certain exotic quality about you. Now you're talking. But enough about me. If you've put up with me for this long, it can't all just be for your own unselfish kindness, can it? Okay, I was smitten with you first time, so I don't hate you too. Uh, I just did it to be nice. I don't hate you too. <laughs> I guess we feel the same way then. You know... This might be our last opportunity to do something. Why not make it worth it? Okay, if you say so. Is that a yes? Sure. She strode forward, reaching out with the claw before she hooked it into a neckline of my shirt. There's that money shot. Looking at me like that. What are you doing? Well, you have to take these off, don't we? Not like that, you'll ruin them. I'll do it. <laughs> oh, don't don't mess up my clothes. Alright, okay, so fussy. Oh, we did a thing. 